Um, this is a longer piece that I tried to make shorter. So we'll see what comes of that. It's called um, Whistling in the Dark. On our third date, just after we've cleaned glasses at this lovely Italian restaurant in a strip mall, Tad leans forward, his tie narrowly missing the flame from the table's candle. He whispers, do you have a rape fantasy? I put down my $9 glass of house wine. I look over at his soft feathery hair glowing in the light of the mini chandelier dangling over our booth. I liked his online profile because his username didn't have daddy or 69 in it. I liked that the photos didn't show him holding the line of a dead fish he'd hooked or the bloody antlers of a deer he'd shot. I liked that he didn't post a picture of himself where another body had clearly been cut out. He seemed safe, an ordinary guy who lived at home with his mom. Of course I have a rape fantasy, I say. I have many. Which one do you want? He clutches his napkin. I begin. In my most common rape fantasy, the doorbell rings and I decide to answer it because I'm expecting a package from Amazon. It's a sweatshirt. I don't really need it, but it has a funny saying on it. I wouldn't be caught dead in this sweatshirt. Because it's a delivery I'm expecting, I open the door. In this fantasy, sometimes it's not a delivery guy, it's the creepy man with the ponytail who lives below me, or my ex-boyfriend Shane, or that new hire from IT who I said hi to once. The point is not who rang the bell, the point is that I answer the door. I answer the door and I let the guy in and he tries to rape me. I open the door and he wedges his big khaki UPS thigh in to push the door even further. I answer the door and he puts a pistol to my temple. I look out through the peephole and go, he looks familiar. And then I open the door and he breaks my nose with his fist. When it happens, a part of me thinks, did he do that on accident? Because I know this person and he never seemed violent to me. I open the door and it's a cop. He says, ma'am, there've been a series of attacks in your neighborhood. Are you aware of this issue? I say, uh, no. I'm not going to let him in because you can't trust anyone. But then he says, I need you to identify some photos for me. It could help us catch this guy before he rapes again. I open the door. The next part is where I know I'm going to be raped in my own home so that I'll have to move, which is another undiscussed consequence of rape. Got rape should be the slogan of a moving company specializing in helping women after an attack. In this rape fantasy, I have a can of mace. I aim it at a face and spray, but nothing comes out because guess what? I've had that mace since 1997 and it has expired. Like, who checks these things? I drop the mace and try that thing where I pretend I'm having a seizure. That doesn't work because I keep hitting my head on the floor. When he pins me to the ground, I try to get a hold of his balls, but he's got one hand protecting them and the other one covering my mouth. I took a self-defense course once years ago, but, but nothing sticks. I just know I'm going to end up in the trunk of a car where I've been told that there there are ways to escape. You're supposed to kick out the taillight and pray that a cop pulls the guy over, or you're supposed to somehow drill a hole through the steel of the car body and get your hand out so you can wave to the people behind you. Well, and if the guy is going to tie you up with ropes, you do this thing that horses do when they don't want the saddle on their backs. You puff out your stomach and body so that the ropes will have slack later. But is this something you can do with your wrists and ankles, like swell them up by the sheer force of will? Other strategies. I tell the rapist I have hepatitis and rabies. I shrug. I'm like, go ahead, do it. I'm going to die anyway. I hope you don't catch what I have. I pee my pants. I shit my pants. I foam at the mouth and roll around on the ground making barking sounds. I yell fire. I yell incoming. I say my name over and over and over again to remind him that I am a human person. I tell him my dog just died and I can't take one more bad thing. I pretend to be dead already unless, keeping one eye slightly open, I determine he's into that kind of thing. I fight like hell. I use the heel of my hand to break his nose. I gouge out his eyes with my car keys, though wondering, do eyes gouge out or gouge in? I don't fully understand the eye gouging part. I possibly don't blow the rape whistle because it's loud and seems super dramatic. Uh, I act as though I like it, encouraging him, oh yeah, exactly that, that this is what I've always wanted. We call this one the reverse psychology approach, since they always say rape isn't about sex, it's about power. If I tell him I want to do it just like this, but with me on top, he might lose his erection. And then he might slash my throat, but maybe not. 
by the way, uh, except for pretending to enjoy the assault, the rest are all techniques I learned in junior high. Tad takes a gulp of his drink. He's ordered an old fashioned like a man in a play. I like the way his hair looks in the candlelight as if it's standing on end. I could bring him home. It might be okay. He clears his throat. I get your point of view. I get it. I have sisters. You do? Yeah, and I worry about them all the time. He shakes his head. It's hard to be a guy too though, you know? We get a bad rap. I pat my lips with a napkin and tell him I need to use the powder room. He looks at my empty glass of wine and flicks his hand in the air to signal the waitress. I slip out of the back door of the kitchen into the alleyway where the busboys are smoking near the dumpster. Hey, I say. Hey, they say. Here's where I could have a fantasy about an almost gangbang rape where we end up instead playing dice and talking about what we were like in middle school. We're not all that different, I think, holding my keys laced between my fingers. I whistle a show tune as I walk to show anyone who might be watching how not afraid I am. That's it. <laughs>